and welcome to Detroit Unity Temple, where the opportunities and challenges of living meet the awesome and the wonderful and the dynamic power of God. We want to say thank you for joining us this Sunday via the internet. Truly, you are welcome to our spiritual community. We know that God is good and good all the time. So we want to say thank you for taking time out of your Sunday morning to join us right here at Detroit Unity Temple. My name is Pastor Gregory Geis, and truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We would like to start our day off with the reading of today's daily word. And I would like to invite up right now the Reverend David Stubbs, who's going to bring that magical word to you from our very own Unity Daily Word. So right now, I'd like to bring up the Reverend David Stubbs. Good morning, Detroit Unity. Today's word is pray for others. Our affirmation, I affirm truth for everyone I hold in prayer. I am honored by people that place in me then they ask for prayer support. As I pray for others, I see one from whom I pray as divine and know the truth that each one is a living expression of God. My purpose in prayer is not to focus on the particulars of a situation, but to hold a higher view. As I center in prayer, I hold the vision that all challenging circumstances are moving toward a satisfying resolution in one way or another. I release all thoughts about the situation that prompted the prayer need and focus on the activity of God. As I pray, I see the love, the life, and the wisdom and the power of God at work, healing, strengthening, and establishing peace in all those for whom I pray. Our scripture says, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Philippians 3 and 4. What a wonderful and powerful reading. Thank you, David. And I love that thought of the day's word, pray for others. And I love that affirmation. I affirm truth for everyone I hold in prayer. Let us now affirm our congregational mission statement. Together, our mission and goal is to prayerfully demonstrate the teachings of Jesus Christ through the study and practice of truth principles. Now let us affirm our vision statement for the living temple. Together, we the spiritual community of Detroit Unity joyously carry out the vision of renewal and prosperity for ourselves, our spiritual home, and our world. We have something that is called food for thought. And I want you to hear this. The word listen contains the same letter as the word silent. And I'm going to say that again. The word listen contains the same letters as the word silent. That is something to think about, isn't it? Those two words together. If this is your first time joining Detroit Unity, we welcome you and ask that you tell others to join us via the internet 
at www.DetroitUnity.com. Click the red Sunday worship service button to be taken to the broadcast every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. When the global health concern is clear, we encourage everyone to visit the temple to be a part of our live and in-person service. And that is so important because we miss you and we want you to be with us. So we can't wait when this health concern is over so I can personally welcome you to be a part of this service. You know, that is so important for us. But right now, I have a special treat that just opens my heart up every time. So let's join together for today's hymn led by Gwen and Charles Scales. And they have told me the title and I'm so excited about it, but I'm just going to let you enjoy it. So right now, let us go to Gwen and Charles Scales for this magnificent song that I guarantee you that you're going to enjoy. Good morning. Let's realize this morning that we can let go of fear because it's nothing to fear. There's only one power and we are one with the one. right now to just be the center of that song and just know that it's all about the oneness wow sometimes there's a song that just speaks so much to the whole thought of what we need in this world just as we need love we need the oneness that can just open us up to it but let us take time now to acknowledge the people and the things in our lives that we are grateful for and I do mean grateful for I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for the presence of God in my life. I'm grateful for each and every person who keep this church alive. You know, sometimes we don't take time enough to reach out to our community. I want you to take a moment and look at someone in your home. 
or someone where you may be at, whether it's your home, your community, you may just be over a friend's house, but somebody you may just want to send a positive thought to because energy goes out. And I just want you to hold them in your heart. Feel that presence, that thought that you're grateful for them. I'm thinking of my family, my daughter, who in a few weeks will give birth to a child. I'm going to be a grandfather. <laughs> and I'm going to be grateful for a new grandchild. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you know, sometimes we got to be grateful for every aspect of life. So I'm grateful to be able to say after all these years, to be grateful for another grandchild, to be grateful for my wife, to be grateful for my family, to be grateful for my spiritual home, to be grateful for the God in my life. I want you to think about that for yourself, to be grateful for those individuals. I am grateful that every Thursday we can give out food to our community, that we can give out over 800 meals to our community. You know, we've came a long way and through this entire summer we've been able to make a difference. So I'm grateful for that. So as you think about what you're grateful for, just remember, Detroit Unity Temple is grateful for you. And that's enough for me because I'm gonna save it for my sermon. <laughs> but right now, I'm grateful for Miss Betsy Harris who's gonna come up and share something with you. So I wanna bring to you our very own Miss Betsy Harris. Thank you, Reverend, and I'm grateful for you and I'm grateful for my church home. At this time, please let us affirm our statement of truth together. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God the good, omnipotent. Now let us say our prosperity thought for the week and it is as follows. My dreams will flourish. My plans will succeed. My destiny will be assured. And the desires of my heart will be granted in Jesus' name. Let me just say that again. As you think about it, I'll read it. My dreams will flourish. My plans will succeed. My destiny will be assured. And the desires of my heart will be granted in Jesus' name. And I think that was just written for me. I needed to hear that at this time. Let us prepare for our morning meditation by tuning out all things that may be distracting you in your home, becoming comfortable wherever you may be as we prepare for meditation by singing the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. us not 
in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. you now to become still. Close your eyes. Get comfortable. Take a few deep cleansing breaths at your own pace. Focusing on the love of God with every inhale and exhale. ask you, Father, to teach us to be comfortable with curiosity, with having a desire to understand, with having a real thirst for righteousness. Your word teaches us to ask and it shall be given to seek and we shall find, to knock and the door shall be opened. How would we even think to ask, seek, or knock if we didn't have a genuine curiosity in knowing you better, knowing how you show up in through and as us. Father, we invite you to please show us how to sit in the silence and hear your voice, not with our ears, but with our hearts. Hearts that are open and receptive and yearning for a deeper connection to you. Let us take a moment to listen with a curious heart to what you are speaking into us right now. Father, we thank you for this time to be still and hear the message that you are gently placing upon our hearts to go forth and allow our curiosity to create new growth opportunities in our lives, our spiritual home, and our world. So it is, and it is so. Amen.
stone Give them hearts for love alone I will speak my words to them wonderful, beautiful song. It means so much to me. Many of you may not know that song, but it takes me back 20 years ago because when I was graduating from ministerial school, we stood there at that moment when we were graduating and they played that song. It was a song that says, Here I am, Lord. We walked across that stage in the year 2000 and many of us, we addressed that moment. 
and address that thought. And for the first time, I answered a ministerial call. So I'm so grateful to be here with you right now. Some of you were there at that time for me. So I want to say thank you to God and thank you to you. My name is Pastor Gregory Geis, and I am so honored to be here for this moment on this Sunday. Before I begin my talk, I have to take a moment to pay tribute to a great American, a great African American who has made his transition. Many of you know of him. His name was John Robert Lewis. He was the son of a sharecropper who survived a brutal beating by the police during a landmark a 1965 march in Salem, Alabama. He went on to become a towering figure of the civil rights movement, a longtime U.S. congressman who died after a six-month battle with cancer. He was 80 years of age. It was inconsolable grief and enduring sadness that we announced, as many of you already know, the passing of U.S. Representative John Lewis. His family said in a statement, he was honored and respected as the conscience of the U.S. Congress, an icon of American history. But we knew him as a loving father and brother. He was a champion in the ongoing struggle to demand respect for the dignity and worth of every human being. He was dedicated his entire life to nonviolent activism and was an outspoken advocate in the struggle for equal justice in America. In America, he was deeply missed. As I stated, he will be deeply missed, so this, this message is dedicated to him. So my question and the title of the sermon is, Are You Listening? Because to him and those who were with him, he answered the call that was asked of him, Are You Listening? The very words of those, that song says, Here I am, Lord. John Lewis and so many individuals heard that cry and that please, who shall I send? John Lewis and others raised their hand to the Almighty and says, here I am, Lord, a young man who was a part of a civil rights movement, went through the South and led a struggle. But before I begin, I just want to get centered myself because I'm dedicating this sermon to him and to all those other individuals who answered that call because they were listening to that deep inner spirit within themselves. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your path and guide me in your truth and teach me for you are the God of my salvation and I will wait for thee all the day long. My brothers and sisters, as you know, when I heard of this man's moment when he was called home, I realized that he was born on February the 21st, 1940. And he passed away on July the 17th, 2020. He was born in the place of Troy, Alabama. Born to the son of a sharecropper. But you know, he heard God calling him. Just a young man who was never expected to do or become no more than a servant of God. But he listened to that heart. He listened to his heart. You see, when you understand what it means to listen to God, you're moved by an inner, inner presence inside of you. You listen to what God is calling you to do in that moment. See, it goes back to so much because you're moved by just that thought. 
that song that was written many years ago it says here I am Lord the Lord of sea and sky I have heard my people cry all who dwell in dark and sin my hand will save I who made the stars of night I will make their darkness bright who will hear my who will bear my light to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I Lord I have heard you calling me in the night I will go Lord if you lead me I will hold your people in my heart I the Lord of the wind and flame I will tend the poor and lame I will set a feast for them my hand will save finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied I will give my life to them whom shall I send here I am Lord is it I Lord I have heard you calling in the night I will go Lord if you lead me I will hold your people in my heart I will hold your people in my heart John Lewis heard that so did Moses heard those words when he went to Pharaoh and he told Pharaoh let my people go you see when you hear those words you understand that God is calling you to do something great inside of you the question is are you listening right now see John Lewis was a part of a great movement that took place in the 60s but that wasn't just the first time can you imagine what Harriet Tubman felt this slave woman who heard it who didn't have much of an education can you imagine what she felt when she was hearing those words who shall I send and all of a sudden she was able to go down through the south can you imagine what it must have been like for her and she was able to travel through the south and just look up into the sky you see hearing is something special because it guides you when your heart is open to God's guidance and she was able to travel can you imagine when she had to follow a direction of guidance from her heart to know when to go right and when to go left are you listening how many times have you had a chance to do right and you had to decide when to go left and when to go right see sometimes I think right now we have to remember that God is calling us right now you see we have to know when God is calling us God called Moses God called Harriet Tubman you see Jesus came here at a time here when the world was going crazy and he came here and he was talking to the world God sent him particularly at a time period when the world was going in a crazy place. The Israelites needed a savior. The world needed someone. I imagine that day on the Mount Sinai when he did his sermon on the Mount and he was standing there and 5,000 people were in front of him. He probably asked him, are you listening? And he gave them that great sermon on the mount. He said, blessed are the, blessed are the poor. Blessed are those who are meek. And he gave him that sermon on the mount. Can you imagine if we happen to have been there and we heard those words echoing in our heart? Can you imagine what it must have been like if we had been at there at that time to have listened to those words being poured out from the master's mouth echoing in our heart? You see, you got to understand what it must have been like at that time to have walked in the, in the footpath of our master teachers. We may have been like that woman who reached through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment to know that we wanted to feel that majestic power you see when you're listening and you hear his voice ringing inside of you touching that part of you it says that 
Hearing is the ability to look deeper than words and catch the inner meaning. It says, he that have ears, let him hear. In many places, the Bible indicates that the ear refers to us is not the physical organ, but the listening mind. The ear that can see, that really hears the auditorial center in the brain. It is here that the mind grasps and analyzes the sound vibration that goes to the heart. You see, right now, the question is, are we listening to what's being played out? You see, all across the world, there's a message being said and sent out to our community. Are we listening? Are we listening when our children are crying at night? Are we listening? Because in Ecclesiastic, the third chapter, the very first verse, it says, to everything there is a season and a time for every purpose under the heavens. And right now we should be seeing what's taking place and this is the time period that we need to be understanding that there's a change coming in this world. Are you listening? Are you understanding what's happening in the world? Because God is calling us to stand up and make a difference in this world right now. More than ever before. Look at what's taking place in our community. Whenever there was a need for us to be listening, it is right now. The shooting that's taking place across America. Are we listening in Chicago? I'm telling you, in Detroit, are we listening? I was reading the news about the amount of killings that's going on. Detroit, Baltimore, California. Are we listening? Somewhere along the way, God is asking us to stand up again because we can no longer hide from the fact mothers who are crying because their child's dying in the streets. Are we listening? Somewhere along the line, we have to ask the question, what are we going to do? I've read the news about the number of killings that's taking place. We have to make a difference. We have to stop the violence that's taking place in our community. Are we listening? If we're gonna have a protest, let us protest the violence in our own community. We have to make a difference. Are we listening? Whenever we see the reaction of our community, that is a symbol that the God is not in us, moving towards a solution. Let me slow down. You see, my brothers and sisters, are we responding to what is happening? Are we hearing what is taking place in our community? Whenever we deviate from the course of our beginning, from who we are, there is a response and a reaction. God sent John the Baptist and he says, repent. He sent Moses to tell the Pharaoh to let my people go. He sent Jeremiah to tell the people. When the people deviate so much from the issues, he told Nelson Mandela to lift his people up. He sent Dr. King so that we may understand what freedom means. And right now our youth are telling us we have to change America. Our youth are telling us to say their names. We have to understand that the God within us is so great. We have to bring it out so that we can make a change. We are that nation within that needs to bring forth. Are we listening because God is calling our names right now? My brothers and sisters, the sound of the music around us is telling us we have to be that change that we want to see. Are we listening to the echoes around us? We have to be the rhythm of a new nation, a new change that can make a whole brand new game that we play in our minds right now. Let us stand up and make a difference right now that will lead to November. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have to do that right now. We have to make sure that we can make a big difference. 
George Washington Carver was able to listen to a peanut and he heard the difference inside because he was listening to his heart. Are you listening to our children? Are you listening to your neighbor? Are you listening to the sound of the God within you? Are you listening? My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that if we're listening, we can hear the difference. If you're listening, you can understand that we can make a difference in this world today. I want to read something to you that comes from Martha Spock. And this is what she wrote. So hear me out, just bear with me. And it reads like this. In the world you have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Not I will have. Christ and you have overcome the world. Listen to his voice. When your life is upset, turn around by the change or any circumstance that seems threatening to your peace of mind. To your very existence, listen to the voice of Christ saying, let not your heart be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Lo, I am with you always. Christ is your center, your anchor, your unchanging life. Christ in you says, I am your center of peace. I am that in you which is strong and steadfast. I am the overcoming power in you. I show you the path of life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. You can meet changing conditions and circumstances. You can rise up with courage and faith. You can go forward with confidence and joy. In me, you can do all things. Turn to be the loving Christ and hear him saying, peace be still to the surging wave of emotion that will overpower you. In Christ, you are calm and quiet. You rest in his presence and feel strengthened and upheld. Remember that through, though things change, God is changeless, enduring. God's love is eternal. When you are depressed or down in spirit, when you feel unworthy, inferior, when you tell yourself that you do not have what it takes to succeed in life, there is that in you which you sense but may you not hear because you do not want to hear, but strong and persistent. The voice is speaking something in you. Know and has always known that there is yet more in you. You are dissatisfied and discouraged, not because of what you lack, but because you have what you have not yet expressed. There is yet more in you. Do you know how remarkable you are? Do you know that you are so much more than you believe yourself to be? That however small or great your accomplishments, there is yet more in you to be expressed? You are a spiritual being. As a spiritual being, you have divine potential. You have the capacity to add to the joy and gladness of life. You have the capacity to express love to others and to relate to others in love and understanding. You are an important part of life. You are needed where you are. Do not hold back in fear. Do not listen to the doubts and arguments of limited personal self. Do not listen to the voices of pessimism. Do not listen to those who would discourage you. Listen to the inner voice which always assures you that you can do more, be more, express more. You are meant for joyous, radiant, successful living. Listen to the truth. The truth that is you are free from bondage of the past. You are forgiving the mistakes of the past. The truth is that you can begin again. You are anxious and worried about others. When the needs of the dear ones seem great, when there seem little you can do, listen to the loving Christ. I in them and thou in me, that they may become perfectly one. The Christ in you beholds the Christ in others. Beholding the Christ, you know that there is no need too great, no problem too complicated,
no condition incurable no impossible the Christ in you reminds you that with God all things are possible having been gone through of the time of darkness listen to the words of light I have come as light into the world that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness I am the light of the world and he who follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of life you are the light of the world the light of Christ shines through you to bless the world let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Not to personal self, but to the Christ self is glory given. Your purpose is to live the truth. Listen to the voice of the Christ that says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. Do you think that you are unimportant, unneeded, you are here by divine appointment. You are an important part of God's plan, of God's creation. You have your unique role to fill. You have been chosen to do. You have been chosen to give expression to God, to the Christ qualities. You have been chosen to be a part of the flow of life you have been chosen to contribute to the good, the happiness, the well-being of the world. You have been chosen to express your particular abilities and talent. You have been chosen to be a light in the world. Listen, listen to the Christ. Are you listening? My brothers and sisters, that is the message. Are you listening? I hope you truly enjoyed that message. But right now, let us prepare to bless and be blessed through our tithes and offering. Let us hold our offering in our hands and affirm our prosperity prayer. Make this a family experience. Make this something we can teach and share with our families and our friends. Together, divine love in and through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you everyone who has continued to bless Detroit Unity Temple with tithes and donations. Your generosity is greatly, I do mean greatly appreciated. So please click the donation button on www.detroitunity.com. Use the temple box, drop box at the Second Avenue entrance and you can check with your bank to set up direct pay or mail your love offering to Detroit Unity Temple, 17505 Second Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48203. Now there's a special song that will be following this moment. But we first would like to bless the offering. So please bear with me as we simply bless this offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we say thank you for all those who are at this very moment taking time to bless Detroit Unity, but we want to bless them. We want to bless the giver and those who are just blessing us with their love in this moment. We say thank you, God, for their thoughts, their attention, their moment of just being with us. So we give you all the, just the thought. For we can never outgive you, but we simply say, thank you, God, for this moment, this time together. So we say, thank you, Heavenly Father, for truly this moment is a blessing for all of us. Oh, God, thank you kindly. So we give all the love back, all that we receive, we extend back to those individuals. Bless their home, bless their family, and bless each and every person. For truly we know that God is their source. And for this we say thank you, God. And so it is. Amen.
right now, ladies and gentlemen, let us just simply experience this moment with another wonderful song by our very own Charles and Gwen Scales. That wonderful message, Reverend Geis, don't you let anything hold you back. Listen. Can you give up an hour Or maybe an evening or two Finding life's true salvation And what it can do for you Cause whatever it is Is holding on to it Let it go Can you wake up tomorrow to God's glorious light? But don't forget, don't forget to pray all to God at night. Well, cause whatever it is that's got you, won't let you go. Cut it loose. Don't you let nothing hold you back. What's holding you back? Are you afraid that you may fall to edge and move from day to day? Well, don't you be in a hurry. No, don't you worry. Jump on in and let the healing begin. Can you speak God's love? And not honor a single sound. Can you open your heart? God's love around Cause whatever it is You know it's just Got to give Don't you Don't you let nothing Hold you back Come on Charles Spread God's love around Cause whatever it is That's holding on to you Won't let you go Give it up, babe I Don't you let nothing Hold you back Cut it loose Don't you let nothing Go on the way This is why I just love Detroit Unity Temple. The talent is such a blessing and the energy is so real. At this time, we've been blessed by so much and you have blessed us. We wanna say thank you in advance for your gift. Thank you for just being a part of this service. I hope you enjoyed the music as I have and if I was at home, I'd just be sending a little chat note to both Gwen and Charles. We want you to remain safe at this moment through the COVID-19 restrictions. Even though they have been relaxed, please reach out to your friends and family and invite them to join our 10 a.m. Sunday service broadcast. 
This is when everyone must be strong in faith and look to the divine light of God to bring us through these trying times. But log in to www.detroitunity.com and click on the red Sunday worship button for our, to view our broadcast at Sunday service every Sunday morning. But right now, I'd like to bring up our very own, very special, wonderful, dynamic presence, our very own Miss Betsy Harris for this week Sunday announcements. Thank you again, Reverend. Good morning, my Unity family. Be sure to complete the Detroit Unity Temple reopening questionnaire. Your thoughts are very important to us. Detroit Unity Temple is accepting canned goods, dry goods, and monetary donations for a food drive and weekly meal distribution. The drop-off date and time, Wednesdays from 4 to 6 p.m. For more information, please contact Edna Williams at area code 248-736-5900. Do you need a few moments to relax and appreciate the power of nature? Visit the Detroit Unity Temple and Detroit Unity Temple's Children's Church Garden. The boxes are located in the Palmer Park Urban Garden. Witness firsthand the power of God from seed to abundance. Detroit Unity Temple prayer chaplains and board of trustee members will continue making wellness calls throughout the month of July. Each and every one of you, you're very important to us and we hope when you receive the call that we find you and your loved ones safe and healthy. If you are grieving the loss of a loved one, and you just need someone to talk to, contact Open Arms Grief and Loss Program. They can be contacted at area code 313-369-5780. Heart-Centered Metaphysic Classes is Thursday evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. via Zoom. Email dutreception at gmail.com to register. And please put in the subject line, Heart Centered. And this will be an ongoing class. The Caregiver Support Group will meet, I'm sorry, the Caregiver Support Group will not meet for the month of August. Again, they will not meet during the month of August. The next meeting date are as follows. Thursdays, September the 10th and the 24th. That would be section one from one o'clock to three o'clock p.m. And section two will be from six to eight p.m. You can contact Marilyn Lawson for further information and to register. Her phone number is area code 313-289-9672. Again, let me repeat, the caregiver support group will not meet for the month of August. Inner City Youth Group will distribute meals and food provided by Forgotten Harvest, and the Detroit Unity Temple Food Drive. This is every Thursday until August the 13th from 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The pickup location is the Detroit Unity Temple Overflow parking lot, which is located directly across the street. 
at 17425 Second Avenue. Call our dollar thought line at area code 313-345-5070 for a powerful word of encouragement. Again, that number is area code 313-345-5070. Detroit Unity Temple, we're trying to stay connected with you, our church family. If you would like to receive our Sunday bulletin and other important emails, please send your email address to dutreception at gmail.com and put the words add me in the subject line. Also, please check your spam folder or junk folder to make sure that it is not landing there and add us as your contact. August birthday and anniversary, people. If you would like your special day recognized during service, please send your name and date of birth, marriage to dutreception at gmail.com by July 27th. Remember, this is for the August birthdays and marriages must be in by July 27th. And please, in the subject line, put August party. Every month at Detroit Unity Temple, we incorporate the 12 powers for an abundant life. Silver is the color of August. The aspects of focus is will, the ability to choose, decide, command, lead, determine. The disciple is Matthew. He represents the decision-making part of the brain. This month's affirmation is I choose my good based on spiritual understanding. Reverend, that completes the Volunteer of the Month announcements for this Sunday. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Betsy Harris, our Volunteer for the Month for the month of July. Let's squeeze it all in there. <laughs> Oh, I like to say something. Well, before we go, I want to do say something. If you received a survey that spoke towards the opening, the reopening of Detroit Unity Temple, please try to send your survey in. We're really looking forward to receiving everyone's survey because we sent those out by both the emails and on our webpage and Returning those surveys are very important because we're asking each of you, our members, to give us an idea of your thoughts about reopening of the temple. So with your information that we can receive from you will help us have an idea of your thoughts about that. We're close, but we want to make sure we take in consideration your thoughts and your ideas. So please, send those to us. You can mail it in, you can fill out the form, you can go online and complete it. But we do not want to go forward without having as many surveys returned to us as possible. And at this time, I also want to say that the board member of the month, the month of July, is not present, but I want to make sure I express our gratitude and our appreciation. The board member of the month is Kevin Irwin. So when you see him, pat him on the back, say, yay, Reverend, Mr. Kevin Irwin, board member of the month. And he's been doing an outstanding job. As you know, he's not here, but he's sent me his thoughts. He wished he could be here. So we want to say thank you, Kevin, for supporting Detroit Unity Temple. And someone, wherever he may be at, give him a hug, tap him on the arm, elbow, and let him know we appreciate you. We love you, Kevin. We bless you, and we appreciate all that you do for Detroit Unity Temple. 
So also right now at this time we want to thank all of you for being with us today. Anyone wishing to make a love offering may do so at www.detroitunity.com. Um, click on the donation button or mail to Detroit Unity Temple at 17505 2nd Avenue, Detroit, Michigan, 48203, or place in the do drop box at the Temple 2nd Avenue entrance. Unity Worldwide Ministry has asked that we join with them in saying this prayer every Sunday. We know that God is a love that has no end and a power that knows no bounds. God's healing power of divine life is restoring, healing, and revitalizing our world in this very moment. We let go of any fears or anxiety, and we affirm that all are safe, healthy, and protected. We bless all those who support us in maintaining vibrant, radiant health. We express divine life in all we think, say, and do. We bless our global family with radiant health, peace of mind, and abundant love. So we say thank you for allowing us to express that prayer. But we also want to take this time to extend that prayer to all those who are part of those essential services, to our police officers, our nurses, those who work in the grocery stores, those who work in the gas stations, those who make our life so supported. Even those who work in Walmarts and the various places that just allow us to be able to continuously have a life. We here, right here at Detroit Unity Temple, we appreciate you. So make sure when you go somewhere in a grocery store or drugstore, tell them thank you. If you happen to go by a person who you know is a part of those services, let them know we appreciate their service. So we'd like to say thank you to Charles and Gwen, to Billy, to Betsy, to Melanie, to each and every one of you. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you. And those of you who are here every Sunday maintaining your effort to support us at Detroit Unity Temple, our Sunday service that we bring to you this broadcast, we appreciate you. Once again, my name is Pastor Gregory Geis, and we want to extend to you our blessing. Yesterday, we had another service of a wonderful spiritual moment. We want to extend our blessing to the family of Gail Caldwell as we sent a home going for her son, John Caldwell. It was a wonderful service indeed, and we truly want to send out our condolences to the family, for we know that God is blessing them right now with comfort, and we would be amiss not to express our condolences to their family. So hold their family in prayer as we just know that right now God is blessing their entire family. But we truly know that right now that God is with that family, supporting them with prayer and love. So we say thank you for God and all those who supported that service on Saturday. But we know that God is with them right now. And we say thank you, God. So let us right now all take this moment as we sing our prayer for protection and our peace song. So let us just take somebody in your thoughts as we move towards closing this service. Peace that 
than was meant to be With God as our Father All of us are free Let us walk with each other Let this be the moment now With every step I take Let this be my solemn vow To take each moment And live each moment In peace eternally Let there be peace on And let it begin with me with you